So as the legislature moves forward with its redistricting process, there is a growing call for Governor Andrew Cuomo to set up his own independent commission that would undertake a parallel line drawing, even if that commission's work would not be legally binding. My next guest is one of those people who would like to see Cuomo move in this direction. He is Bill Samuels. He is the founder of the New Roosevelt Initiative. Bill, thanks very much for your time. It's good to see you. Well, it's my pleasure, Liz. So explain to me how this would work exactly. Uh, there was a redistricting reform movement to create an independent redistricting commission, as we have discussed many times on this show. Didn't happen in the legislature. Now lawmakers are saying it's too late. You would like to see the, gover the governor go in a little bit of a different direction. I think Governor Cuomo, if he is really serious about affecting the 2012 elections, cannot just say he is going to veto LAT4 or the legislative suggestions that will come to him. Let me tell you why just saying he will veto is not enough. Hmm. First question is, Liz, veto what? Veto well, what? Well, hold on. There, I mean, the way that this usually works is that the legislature comes up with a plan. Both houses of the legislature are in on it. I mean, you know the drill. They create a plan and they give it to the governor, and he either approves it or he doesn't. And if not, it goes to a special master in the courts. That's how it's been in the past. Exactly. All right. And that has gone on for 30 to 40 years. Right. In May of 1992, Governor Mario Cuomo wanted to veto a redistricting plan that was submitted to him. He signed it reluctantly and bartered it off for an ethics bill. Hmm. Ah, but this now, governor, what wait, hold on, this governor doesn't need to do that, right? I mean, this governor has demonstrated, uh, and look, you know, if there are things to say, to critique about this governor's performance, I'm certainly not going to shy away from it, but he got an ethics bill. He got a property tax cap. He doesn't need to trade for anything with redistricting. At, at least not, he doesn't uh, say so. Right. Liz, uh, I think he will veto. That's not my point. Okay. In the, in the marriage equality uh, movement. Right. Governor Cuomo led a very creative, aggressive campaign that was not assured of victory. Redistricting isn't marriage equality. It's difficult to understand. The last four hearings that started today in Syracuse and moved to Rochester tomorrow will receive almost no publicity. Hmm. They only end in October. The LAT4 requirement is only to put a plan in front of the governor sometime next year in the first quarter. Okay. When, when he vetoes, uh, it may go to a special master. Let me tell you what happened to the, uh, in 1992 on a congressional challenge. The special master ended up making a proposal, but he still was eager to turn it back to the legislature. Okay. And in both uh, 1992 and 202, the courts ended up ruling that legislative gerrymandering was appropriate. If Cuomo really wants to get an educated public, he should appoint a committee. It should, by October 15th, put together not the plan, but a plan that meets the four or five principles that are in his bill, whether that be continuity or minority representation or uh, competitive districts. Okay. It doesn't have to be the bill. It has to be a acceptable right. bill. Bill. As a result, Liz, everybody in the state is going to, every community is going to debate and see what he thinks is fair. All right. Right now, we don't know. Hold on. Let, let, let me just back up for one second. You're basically making an assumption that past is prologue for this particular governor, which is not necessarily the case. He succeeded where other governors failed. He succeeded with a property tax cap. He succeeded with gay marriage. He succeeded, as you just pointed out, he succeeded in getting a property tax cap bill, right? So ethics reform, et cetera. So why are we assuming that just because other people did it in a particular way that this governor is going to be forced to go the same route as well? Well, if he vetoes, which he will, it will be the first governor that has. But this is a much more difficult issue than uh, the uh, budget or uh, the tax cap. Skelos's number one priority is redistricting, number one. Sure. Skelos was very comfortable uh, with, with many of the things that Cuomo got passed. 
And the governor did what he said he was going to do. That's not the question. I'm telling you, this issue will get buried. He will veto the bill. But I'd like the courts and the masters, one, to see what he considers hmm. to be an appropriate plan. But more than that, if he puts out an appropriate plan, every community from Hempstead, New York, to Rochester, New York, every congressman is going to comment. There will be a statewide debate in the fall. I it get will it. put pressure on that for. I get it. I get it, Bill, but here's the problem. What you're suggesting is politically difficult, right? I mean, it's very difficult. You're asking the governor to put out there his personal opinion, his personal political opinion, about redrawing district lines, which, as you noted, the Senate Republicans are very interested in doing because it's basically life or death for them at this point. They'll never do anything with him again. I mean, if he, go, if he puts a personal imprint on a, on a plan like that, and it looks like what we think it would look like, which would be Democrat-dominated districts in, in, in a way that Republicans probably won't be able to win, isn't that going to be problematic for the rest of his agenda, which he, which he is laying out this very day? The governor went center-right and prioritized certain changes that he told, about, told us about in his campaign. Right. If you really want to change the legislature, you must do both redistricting and campaign finance reform. And we're not suggesting that he endorse the plan that his committee puts forward. It needs to be an example of an acceptable plan, All not right. the only acceptable plan. Okay. And it will force debate, and, and without that debate, this whole process is going to be buried on page 33 of every newspaper. And there's no guarantee any more than in the 1967 Constitutional Convention or with Mario 1990 that we will have any fundamental progress. All right. He either has to attack or decide he's winking like we all have. Do you believe, uh, since the though, November election, you, and there'll be no change. Okay. Do you believe, though, that he actually, you believe him when he says he intends to veto. You believe him when yes. he says he intends to play hardball on this particular topic. You do not think, as was speculated, that he traded away redistricting with a sort of nudge, nudge, wink, wink, know what I mean sort of thing with the Senate Republicans in order to get marriage. You do not believe that. I do not believe that. I do believe, and I think anyone that was rational, it was governor would not have put redistricting on the agenda for this particular session. Right. Okay. Uh, however, the session's over. We've made a lot of budget changes. We have attacked the property tax issue. Okay. Redistricting, either let the governor just say it's not a priority, yes I'll veto, and we'll say a prayer that the courts don't do what they did in 1992 and 202 or that we don't end up with a special master who still kicks it back to the legislature and we have a compromise, a positive movement, but it's sort of like the ethics bill. Uh, we're half pregnant, we're happy, but it doesn't fundamentally change things. <laughs> if he gets a debate started right now, you will get interest in every community and the citizens will back Cuomo. So it's a simple question. Well, is he as serious about redistricting as he was about marriage equality? Then let's have a creative campaign to force change now. Okay. Well, we shall see. I mean, as of right now, we see the governor talking about the economy. He's going to tour the state and talk about the economy and jobs, 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 and that's his new focus. I know that you are not alone in this call. Other good government advocates are certainly calling as well for this sort of thing. We will see, Bill Samuels. You are never a boring guy, though, I have to say. Well, thank you very much. I want to thank you for joining us. My pleasure.